A story a day. Remember I told you on Friday that I wanted to talk to you about Aman Jordan. Because Lupita is always telling us, you know, live from Aman Jordan. Jordan. Aman <laughs> Jordan. Oh, Be- now this is beautiful. Beautiful place. Jordan, you know, run by the king and, uh, and lovely place. Fantastic. I've always wanted to, uh, to go to Aman. So one day, by the way, uh, at CNN, uh, when I was there, uh, you had 42 bureaus around the world, right? 42 correspondents. All of them fighting to be on the air every day. Being on the air, there's nothing like being on the air. And your story has Like a story from your bureau is up on it. Oh, it's huge. But then you do that, and then tomorrow you're competing again with those same 42 guys. So the big story after the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, everybody wanted to be in Iraq. Obviously, that was the story. Saddam Hussein, the forces back and forth, the coalition. Everybody wanted to be in Iraq, in Baghdad. And, and, and to get to Baghdad, obviously, you had to ask each time, hey, man, uh, uh, there was a rotation, there was a roster, like a roster. Mm. And they would rotate, you know, the, the, the correspondence they thought would, would, would make it, would perfect for Baghdad, you know, war correspondence. So I would ask from 2003, I kept asking, asking, asking. Never getting a reply. Never getting a reply. And I'd ask, you know, what's going on, guys? I really want to go to Baghdad. I mean, let me, can I be part of this rotation? It wouldn't come, wouldn't come, wouldn't come. Finally, it was Christmas Eve 2004. Christmas Eve. I get this call. Jeff, it's your turn. Right, so I'm saying, you know what? Okay, it's Christmas Eve. What to amend a holiday? Kill him to amend a zake. So you guys just decided to give me this <laughs> when you know that no one is there. You're tossing me a bone. Mm-hmm. Right? Because everyone else is? It's on holiday. Because someone's sour too. Give it to me. Christmas Eve. Give it to me. New Year's Eve. It's okay. This is my chance. I'm heading to Baghdad. From Leg- I was based in Lagos then. So fl- the, the flight was Lagos. Uh, I think it was London, yeah. Go pick up equipment and stuff from London <clears throat> to Amman, Jordan. And then from Amman, now the flight Baghdad into Baghdad. So fine, get to London overnight. So no, overnight, now it's Christmas, right? Yes. Christmas Day. I'm in London getting ready, get the equipment, get all the stuff. Boom, fly out to Amman. Beautiful place, Amman. I got there about in the afternoon. And it's Christmas Day, Jalas. People are with family all over the world. People are, you know, spending time with loved ones. I'm on my way to Baghdad. Check into the hotel. And uh, great, great town. You know, nice, beautiful buildings, quiet streets, a good mix of people. Really loved it. Spend all of Christmas now. I'm, uh, I'm on my own, you know, with my crew. Uh, we have dinner. Get ready for tomorrow. Say, okay, tomorrow. tomorrow no. I was alone. I was going. I was flying in there alone. Uh, got, so I got up in the yeah Christmas night, Boxing Day. I get up in the morning, and there's breaking news. Tsunami has hit Banda Aceh, and that whole place is devastated. Hundreds of thousands dead. Boxing Day, two thousand four. I'm on my way to Baghdad, the biggest story of my life so far. And what happens? Tsunami hits. The news has shifted to the other side of the world. But I tell myself, you know, it's okay. This is my assignment. Get to the airport. Get on this chartered flight. Basically, you know, very few flights were going into Baghdad at the time. And we're flying into Baghdad. It takes about an hour and change. We get to 22,000 feet. And then the captain says, folks, we're starting our descent into Baghdad. But because of this insecurity on the ground in Baghdad, we're going to do what we call a spiral landing. So what a spiral landing is, the plane goes from 22,000 feet, spirals around literally for like two minutes from 22,000 to landing in two minutes to avoid the surface-to-air missiles which are spread around Baghdad. 
What? Can you imagine? These guys are looking to hit any passenger plane <laughs> that's landing in Baghdad. So, I mean, these daring, by the way, they were South African pilots, huh? Daring pilots. You're at 22,000 feet. All of a sudden, you go, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, you want to lose your breakfast right away because this thing is dizzying. What? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Before you know it, boom, you've landed. In two minutes. In two minutes from 22,000 feet. Jalas, it was the scariest thing. People were screaming on the plane. People were screaming. And all this to avoid the surface to air missiles. So fine, we land, get off the plane, walk into this building. This building, because Baghdad has now been at war for the last 18 months or so, there's hardly anyone there. What? There's a bit of security here and there. And I'm wondering, okay, now what do I do? do I Where take, do I start yeah, from? Do I take a taxi to a bureau? What do I do? Suddenly, these two guys appear. And you could tell, you know, this was security guys. No uniform or anything. Just, you know, uh, half coats, mm. heavily armed, glasses. They come up to me. Are you JF Coinage? I said, yes, I am. Here, boom. They threw a flak jacket, bulletproof jacket. Wear this. You're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> bulletproof jacket. You're going to need it. So get my bags. Get into the car. Now we're driving. Now I've met some other of their guys. There's like 12 of them. They came to pick me up. There's like 12 of them in their cars. Everyone heavily, heavily armed. Glasses, caps, half coats, guns everywhere. Now we're leaving the airport. And they say, hey man, by the way, this highway over here, it's known as Assassin's Highway. If we get hit, you just keep going. <laughs> now I'm being briefed. <laughs> if we get hit, hey! just keep going. It's like a movie. My friend, my friend, 160 kilometers an hour. On Assassin's Highway. They, they said, if anything comes on the road, we're going through. We're not stopping for anything. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be rough. The kilometer to Akwaje? Na Bunduki. Boss. On the, at 160 kilometers an hour. Uh, with what these, car? What car? It's uh, like a Land Cruiser. Land Cruiser. Yeah. B and they're bulletproof, by the way, eh? Bulletproof land cruiser, and we're all like a convoy down Assassin's Highway. Huh? We get to the bureau, maybe about what, maybe 30, 45 minutes later. Everyone's sweating. You could see they're sweating because, you know, at 160, everyone's you know, at, on edge. We get to the bureau, no, no incidents, nothing. We get in. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm registering myself. Hey guys, I'm here, right? A story a day. Where Only on hot. A story is not finished. Where did that come from? <laughs> so anyway, for the next 40 days and 40 nights, I was up on the rooftop, either doing lives, crosses, going down in the streets below, if it was safe, and reporting live from Baghdad. It was crazy. I mean, you, f you hear bombs in the distance. You hear sniper fire here. You hear uh, car bombs down the road. And we were in the green zone, the place they call the green zone, the heavily fortified green zone. That's where the bureau was. But still, Jalas, never been so scared in my life, man. N it was crazy. You, you didn't know who was who or what was going to happen when. Which building was going to be hit today, or which sniper, or which assassin would be, you know, would be gunning for you the and next you day? There, how many people died? Oh my God! Hundreds, day. hundreds, Jalas. Every day there was a car bomb here. There was, uh, you know, a suicide bomber there. There was crazy, crazy stuff. But it was a hell of an experience. And despite the tsunami, which had taken over the story for probably the first couple of several days for several days we you know obviously baghdad was always going to be a big story so you know into january they held their elections end of january and you know there was that big brouhaha back and forth of course opportunists trying to you know 
make hay while the sun shines, you know, and getting into the news. So we were busy, busy, 40 days and 40 nights. Why has there been a big interest about Baghdad? Because Americans, it was all about America. They had troops there. They had like, you know, 16,000 or whatever it was. Do they have any natural resources that people go for? Oil, my brother. Oil. The big O. Yeah. The black gold. Huge, huge uh, oil fields out there. So it was a big story. And American interests, of course, were huge. So anyway, I do my 40 days. And uh, the boss says, listen, man. Time to get out. We need to rotate you. It's been a good one. It's been a good After run. Well days. done. Yes. Get Did back. you report the elections? Yes, the ones in Baghdad in, in, to, uh, in 05, early 05. Yes. I did those elections. So now we're getting back on Assassin's Highway. Wow. Same crew, six, same guys. 160 kilometers. 160 kilometers. Bulletproof cars. <laughs> we get to the airport. As I'm checking in and putting my bags in, there's a call from Atlanta. Hey, your replacement will be a few days late. Do you mind working another few days? What did you say? <laughs> I said, whatever you want. We'll go back. 160 <laughs> kilometers. Boss. But you know, mentally, uh -huh. Maliza, you know, that mission is over. You want to get back to Oman, Jordan, relax, get a massage, you know, whatever it is. Just get out of this madness and then head to Lagos. You're told what? Your replacement hasn't arrived. Just hang in there a few more days. Back in the car. 160 kilometers. Assassin's Highway. <laughs> Back to the bureau. I'm so telling all you. This Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I walk in and they say, hey, man, welcome back. I said, yeah, it's like I never left. <laughs> <laughs> so you did um, 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 another, day? another week. But one more time. Is it, then after one week, yes. you finally. Yeah, finally ex back on the highway. 160 clicks to the airport. Check in. And I waited about five hours for that flight to come. Because there was a, there was a report that uh, the, the surface to air missiles, you know, those uh, rebels mm -hmm. were hitting anything that would land. That day, there was a credible threat. So the airline, the South African airline pilot says, shoot, maybe we shouldn't land. But they did, five hours later, they landed. Man, I've never ran onto a plane like that. I ran on. But then here's the catch. To get to 22,000 feet, you have to do a the same spiral. The same spiral we did coming down, you spiral going up. Because you could be hit as you're taking off. So when you, ch you hit 22,000 feet, <sighs> and breathe. And note that you have landed. No, you're still in the air. <laughs> we what? Did, we land in Amman, Jordan. Oh, man, Jalas. I've never, ever. I, I think I, I got off the plane and kissed the ground. Kissed. I'm out of that madness we just left for 40 plus days. Man, Amman, Jordan. Every time I think of it, I say, this was the place where you relax and you know, your, your mind comes back to normal. And Lupita, wow. yeah, Linda Lupita, well, 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 that is my story about Amman, Jordan. And that is a, a story, story a day. day. It's the Hot Breakfast with Jeff and Jelano.